I'm Denise Smith and I'm the program manager with Rise Vermont. I want to welcome you to the Rise Vermont TV show. In partnership with Northwest Access TV, we're going to be providing weekly insight, inspiring ideas, and stories about how to live healthier, happier lifestyles in Northwest Vermont in the counties of Franklin and Grand Isle counties. Thank you so much for joining us and we hope you enjoy the show. Well, thank you very much for asking me to, to speak today. Um, as we talk about goal setting, um, and with my background being nutritionist, personal trainer, coach, uh, and gym owner, I assume we're looking for health-related things. But keep in mind, these can cross over to anything within your own business. Um, goal setting, there's systems that are in place that we find work better than others. Uh, and a lot of that comes down to learning a little bit about yourself and why you want what you're thinking or what you decide that you want. Uh, so as far as in the health realm, uh, first of all, making sure we move every day. Not only is movement great for our system, um, but it's something that's gonna help you energy-wise, it's gonna help you think more clearly. It's not just about getting muscles or um, being a certain weight, it's about just feeling better and being more productive and, and effective with what you're doing. Um, so I really stress the fact of making sure you're moving every day with a purpose. Um, you know, walking to work, simple things like that, obviously depending on where you live. Uh, keeping in mind, um, making it an extra effort to, to say, okay, well, I'm going to challenge myself to, to take it to the next level. So getting clear, really taking some time to write things down. Um, how many of you guys have goals in the health realm um, right now? Show of hands, yes? Some? Okay, good. Not that you have to, but again, uh, the reason I got into this business and career and lifestyle is because I found that health was the foundation of my effectiveness, and that's where I really am passionate. Um, you know, I find that I'm much more effective when I'm paying attention to what I'm putting in my body, what I'm doing with my body, and putting a little bit of guard on my mind. And when I say guard on my mind, uh, we all have negative self-talk that happens. We all hear something that lingers that might not be the best thing that we've heard or it's critical. Um, the key is to really process those things and making sure that we're, we're listening to where it's coming from. Oftentimes when we hear a negative thing from somebody else, it says a lot more about the person than it does about ourselves. But keep in mind, they may be being critical to the point where they're looking to help you as well. So really finding what the lesson is in those things. Um, again, we can beat ourselves up so much by, again, a, a circumstance that's happened in the past. So really processing those things. Uh, and again, playing guard on the mind as far as what comes in and what we're doing. So getting clear on what you want and why is a huge step. Um, there's going to be more than one why if you want it to be effective. So making sure that it comes from you and what you want is, a, is an important piece. Also, stacking yourself um, a, a, a group of those whys with action. If we have the plan, that's going to get us super motivated. We, we understand what we want, and all of a sudden we've decided that we've got a plan. Um, there's motivation for a short period of time. Then all of a sudden, that motivation can start to dwindle. Life gets busy. How, how am I supposed to put an extra thing into my life? All of a sudden, if we put action into it and hold ourselves accountable to it, that can be something that you decide to surround yourself with. So if we've got it written down, do we keep our goals on us? It's very important. I learned this from a friend um, a couple of years ago that really helped. Not only do we write them down, but we read them every day. That's gonna be a big step to help our subconscious. You know, there's so much that our body does and throughout the day, we have to process those things. So if we're looking at something that, um, again, matters a, a whole lot to us, but it's not in our face every day, when we go to sleep, we're not able to process everything, and all of a sudden it gets lost in the shuffle. So if we really keep that in the forefront of our mind and take that action, that's going to help us get to the next level. Now, oftentimes people say, well, I don't want to set a goal that's too big because I might fail at it. Some people might disagree with, the, with my approach on this, but I have found that the bigger my goal is, the scarier it is, the more excited I get about it. Now, 
how we react to fear is another process that we have to establish in our minds. Um, fear is a, such a conscious and, and important thing in our lives, but how you react to it is the important piece. So I'm not saying don't have baby steps along the way. I'm not saying um, you know, don't focus on the little things. The little things will build up to that big thing, but we have to identify the plan, um, and those things can be simple, something as simple as, what am I going to do today to make a difference and help me get one step closer? What am I going to do this week? If we say, okay, I'm, I've got a list of all these things, and it may be in, improve my water intake. It may be just making sure I move for 10 minutes today. It may be something um, I'm going to sit and, and just be mindful of, of gratitude for the day. All those things are awesome. But if we tell someone, okay, let's do all those things in one day, that can be overwhelming. Not that you can't do it but making sure that you're deciding what's the one thing today that I need to focus on that I'm lacking and that's going to be most effective for me to get to my goal. So again, that big scary goal can make us uncomfortable. We want to make ourselves uncomfortable because how many of you have done something that matters so much to you but made you feel super uncomfortable but then you did it anyway? Whether it's in your career, whether it's in your personal life, you know, it may be a, a relationship that you've been felt like you were stuck in for so long and you're like, okay, it's going to be so scary being on my own again, but then bam, you do it. Oh, that was great. I, I know I'm free again. I, I'm, I'm my own person. Or, you know, school was really tough for me. So, you know, I was somebody that was on, on academic probation in college. Um, and it wasn't that I didn't care about what I was doing. It wasn't that I wasn't trying. It was I was overwhelmed and doing too much and couldn't focus. And all of a sudden, I, I got a little bit of guidance from a role model of mine that was a nutrition professor at UVM, changed my life. Because I was able to approach it in a different way. I was able to step back and say, okay, what are my core classes that I need to focus on? Let me take a break from work. Let me back up on the social stuff. You know, it was all stuff that I need to be accountable for, but it was a learning process. I got some coaching myself in how to balance my time and energy better. So no matter what it is, we need to make sure that we're always coming back to our focus of why we want to do it and holding ourselves accountable, whether it's telling a friend or putting it out there in public or just checking in with yourself every day. Whatever is slightly uncomfortable for you is going to be a good start. If you get the courage because you know, you're going to have times where that energy is super high or we're going to have times where that energy is kind of low, it's going to be different levels depending on how you're feeling. But the key is key into how you're feeling and that's going to help you decide. You know, if you're not doing anything that makes you uncomfortable in a day's time, if you're not being playful and having fun or asking something that you might be a little bit scared to do, whether it's of yourself or someone else, then it's hard to, to say, are you really living to your potential or working towards what you want? So activity, again, finding something that you can do each day, as little as it may sound or Get a big one. You know, it could be just something that, that okay, I, I really want to do um, a 5K this spring. You know, there's so easy to find something like that, but it's right now it might sound daunting to, to walk a, or run a 5K. We've got one, the Run for Gym, coming up May 6th this year. Put it on your schedules. We want to get businesses involved. We want you to build teams for those things. That's something that all you have to do is today, you, you think about the time you have. You've got three and a half months to, to train for this. You've got time, you know, walking a mile, saying walking for 10 minutes. All of a sudden, in a week, we're going to do that three times in the, in the following week. Before you know it, you'll be able to walk or jog. Build those things up. If you need assistance, ask somebody in, a, in the professional realm. I'm available. It doesn't have to be you have to come and join the gym. You can call, you can ask, you can email. I'm happy to help people. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, there, there's just so many things out there that we limit ourselves in our own heads before we can put it out there and try. And that's the number one thing that holds us back all the time is, is our own self. So instead of building up an excuse around something, we all have excuses. I'm too busy. I can't. I, I just don't have the time. Uh, I'm too tired to do it. What's the one thing that energizes us the most? Movement. Movement. Movement is incredible for energy. You know, I um, just asked something about um, another committee that we're on for the school and I, I, I wasn't able to make the meeting. I, I had other things scheduled and it was just a chaotic day. But I mentioned to her in, in the message, you know, I'm working on a, on a fitness chair. Uh, you know, I've looked at them online a little bit, but 
you know, when we're sitting, you know, how, how many of you guys have drifted into many things, you know, since I've been talking, you know, and maybe I need to be a better speaker, I don't know, but the, <laughs> the point is, you know, we have imaginations, so, and we don't want to limit those imaginations, but to be more interactive, we need to be involved in, in having blood flow. If we're cutting off our blood flow at our hips and at our knees, and we're, we're looking at our desk or, or our heads down, that puts us in a state of, of relaxation, of rest. It's not alert, but if we're up, I'm alert, I'm, I'm aware of what's happening, I'm, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to move, I'm ready to interact. Um, and I just think that's such a huge concept that we can understand from students and, and youth to all the way up through, you know, office buildings and office work. You know, if we had a standing workstation right now that we were all standing, there'd be more interaction, there'd be more involvement, there'd be more energy flow. So just moving is such an important piece. What we're putting in our body, you know, as a nutritionist, I'm very passionate about what we're putting in our body. I don't eat perfectly. I love chicken wings. I love ice cream, but I've made sacrifices for those things. I, it's not that I never have it, um, and it's it's a constant, um, you know, on my mind. You know, when, okay, well, how do I how do I adjust this? Last year, I bought an ice cream maker. I make protein shakes. I put vegetables in them, and then I put it in the ice cream maker. It tastes great. My kids love them. Well, two out of three. That's a pretty good. <laughs> that's a pretty good indication that it's a good option. You know, I put peppers and carrots in my protein shake. Now, don't get me wrong. I put dates in there to, to sweeten it up a little bit. But that's just a, a simple example of I feel satisfied eating ice cream, even though it's a protein shake that's healthy and and, and helpful for me. Can you share your recipe? Absolutely. I, I did a video last year online um, at the gym, uh, but I, I can definitely share some recipes. I've got a lot of different recipes. So, yeah. Um, Mindfulness, again, connecting with what we're doing. You know, um, I make sure that I make time every morning to get up, well, I shouldn't say every morning. I make the point to get up every morning. I would say out of the last year, I might have missed 20 days. So that's a pretty good percentage of me getting up and making time for myself with mindfulness and activity. I sit in the basement and breathe and think about gratitude. I have things that help me sometimes. I listen to classical music, I've tried that. I've done um, motivational speeches that I've listened to. And then I've, sometimes I just sit with my journal and, and, and breathe and then think about the family that I have and the support I have in this community, um, the, the, the home I have and, and how lucky I am to be who I am and where I am. You know, all those things. If you start your day like that, um, I mentioned in, in one of the notes and handouts here, owning your morning, that was, a, a great video that I just uh, received last week from Dan Marlowe, um, who's an amazing spinning instructor and a very inspirational person in this community. Uh, and it just, I still connected with it because like I said, this past year plus, I've, I've been making that time. Before I would get a workout here and there, but a lot of people say, oh, it's so easy for you to be in shape, you own a gym. Well, when I'm at the gym, it's usually an 11 to 12 hour day and I'm training other people. So a lot of times when I do get a break, like say there's a cancellation in my schedule and I have my workout clothes with me, which I make sure I do because I want to prep and be ahead, uh, planning for that, I'll get in and I'll, I'll go work out on something. And I'll, cu customers and, and members and friends will joke around saying, oh, I didn't know you worked out because they never see me work out in my own gym. I work out in my basement and I'm not promoting working out at your, in your basement. <laughs> work out in my gym. <laughs> But at the same time, it's, that's time that I want to give to other people. That's what I'm passionate about. I want to help people there. Um, I do enjoy working out there when I can. Um, there's cool equipment there that I don't have in my basement. I, I get the reject equipment in my basement. Um, <laughs> but again, that time in the morning not only gives me time for myself to focus and energize my day, but it also allows me to see my kids because they'll wake up within an hour to an hour and a half after I am him up and they'll come down and say, okay, it's workout time, daddy, or daddy, I want to read. Now that puts a little damper on the workout, but I've already got my time in when I, before they're up anyway, most of the time. Sometimes they get up at the same time. I try to be quiet when I go. <laughs> but you know, those are things like one of my, again, because I'm passionate about what I do and I want to put more time and energy into it, sometimes I feel like I'm not seeing my kids and it breaks my heart. But then that's giving me the opportunity to get up in the morning and I see them more. And it's, it's awesome. So take time for you, listen to your body, be healthy, and decide to set a goal. The decision is the key. There's people around the, you that can help you plan, but if you're not looking internally first, then it's, it's not gonna be worth it and you're not gonna be dedicated to it. So find what you want, find what you're passionate about, and 
let us know if we can help you along the way because we're happy to do it. Thank you very much. Thank you.